I'm pastry chef Jessica Craig, and we'll be making a Cho Chocolate honey cake today. We're gonna start with making the chocolate honey ganache, and I'm gonna get the honey in the pot first. And now I'm gonna put the two cups of heavy cream. This recipe came about because I took a trip to Italy and we went to a pastry shop where I so happened to have a chocolate bonbon where it was a semi-sweet chocolate on the outside and then it was like a milk chocolate honey on the inside. And as soon as I bit into it, it was just a flavor combination that I loved very, very much. And I couldn't wait to come home and recreate some kind of recipe where it just replicated those flavor profiles. I chose the 66% chocolate because honey can be on the sweet side and then the 66% chocolate is a little bit more better than let's say a milk chocolate. I put salt in just about anything that I make because it helps to round out the flavor and the sugar to taste a little bit more round instead of a one note. For most of my career, I worked at a lot of different um, Italian places. So it was a huge goal of mine to be able to travel to Italy and to have like Italian food firsthand. I grew up um, in Suffolk County on Long Island. Growing up, I would cook for the holidays uh, with my family a lot. My sister pointed out the fact that I like to cook a lot, so I took it to heart. And then once in school, I realized very quickly that pastry was definitely my passion. Now we're gonna make the chocolate cake batter. I have the sugar, cho cocoa powder, as well as AP flour in this bowl. Salt, baking powder, baking soda. In Europe and in many other countries, sourcing your ingredients from local sources is very important, which also ties in cho chocolate because they work very closely with their farmers and their producers. All right, and straight into the oven. Once your cake is baked and nice and cool, we're gonna cut our layers out of the cake. Pick a spot on your cake, which I'm gonna pick like right here. Your first go around, you just wanna mark where your layer is going to be and you're just gonna use your knife to guide you. And you're just gonna repeat this process for each layer. Even in living on Long Island and then deciding to move to a lot closer to New York City and living in Queens, um, specifically in Astoria, it's one of the most diverse places in all of New York. And that was really important to me because I like the influence of all the different cultures. I love to have a blend of people around me and for that to reflect, um, even in the way that I cook, like yes, my focus a lot of times is Italian food, but it's the nice blend of the different cultures that makes the world go round. I would really enjoy this cake with a, a nice hot cup of Earl Grey tea and a scoop of Fior de Latte Gelato. I like using torches a lot. Definitely in honor of Julia Child, she is quoted as saying that a woman should always have a torch. I think it's helpful for a lot of things. Um, I think it's helpful for if you're mixing, let's say a buttercream and your buttercream is getting too cold, you can always use a torch to heat up your bowl a little bit. Same if you're whipping a ganache, your ganache gets a little too stiff, you can always use a torch to heat it up slightly. But in this case, we're using it to add some shine and some texture to the outside of the cake. I think it's a great kitchen tool as long as you use it safely and not setting random things on fire. <laughs> All right, so the bubbles are popped. Very happy with how it came out. when I'm coming up with a plating, it depends on the moment. Sometimes if I'm working with someone else, I might sketch out what I'm doing just cause I don't feel like I can always fully explain myself. And most people who work in a kitchen are pretty visual. So then I'll draw out what I'm doing. But as of late, I've been working by myself a lot. So I, I like to work in the moment and just kind of go with what I'm feeling. So um, 
you know, I, I have some beautiful honeycomb, I have some honey tweel that I think adds some nice dimension and crunch to the cake because the cake itself is on the softer side. So to give, to give it some dimension and texture, I just kind of placed the different items where it just felt right. Not only this recipe, but a lot of recipes, if you have the chance to cook and to bake in your own kitchen, can take you to a different country without having to actually travel. It truly brings me back to that moment where I had that bonbon in Italy and I hope it does the same for you.